Greetings, brethren. I want to just share briefly something with you. I know that some of you have certainly seen um, the video, the two-part video series, which is available on the YouTube channel, Word Like a Hammer. Um, that video, that two-part video series is called A Mark of the Beast. And it is dealing with the idolatry of what most Americans call Christmas, but it is appropriately called Christ Mass. It is dealing with the idolatry of that festival, that celebration. And of course, the reasons why that is the case. Um, and I really hope that if you're watching this video, that you have in fact seen those videos that I'm referring to. If not, I would recommend that you watch those very highly, very strongly. This is a very serious thing. And I say that because it's a very serious thing in the eyes of God. When you come to see through the eyes of God, when you see what the scriptures are teaching us about various things, you come to see how God views such harlotry, such acts of treachery, spiritual whoredom. You see, we're, you and I, as Americans, we it doesn't matter if you've gone to church all your life. In fact, I think you're in a worse position. Oh dear, you're in a worse position if you've been attending American churches all your life. So, it doesn't matter how you've been raised here in America. You and I have been steeped in pagan influence, satanic philosophy our entire lives. And so we have many uh, presuppositions and assumptions, which, you know, we do. Many traditions and ideals which are not of God. They don't come from God. They don't come from the scriptures, but they're based on <clears throat> ancient, old world, pagan, Babylonian mindsets. It's satanic. And Christ Mass is one of those things. Um, and so here's what I want to get to. There was a woman, an older woman, whom I, I, I deeply respect. She invited me to a Christ Mass play at her church. And at first I said thank you. But she just kind of kept pressing the issue like she wanted a commitment. I said, well ma'am, <clears throat> with all due respect, we don't celebrate Christmas. And she looked shocked at me and said, what do you mean you don't celebrate Christmas? I said, well, we don't celebrate Christmas because, well, I've come to learn many things about the holiday itself, its true nature, its origins, what it stands for, really. And among that, among those things, the reality that Jesus of Nazareth wasn't even born in December, that in itself makes it very difficult to promote a, a season and a holiday that's supposed to be centered around his birthday when... He wasn't even born at that time of year, you know. In those kind of words is what I said to her. And she said, so, do you, do you celebrate the Lord's birthday at all? I said, well, I know, ma'am, I don't. She said, well, I've heard of this. I, uh, you know, we don't put up a Christmas tree. We don't do the gift giving, but we still celebrate the Lord's birthday. So why don't you celebrate the Lord's birthday? And of course, this led into a deeper discussion. And as I said in, in that video series, that to dismantle Christ Mass, you must deal with the birthday issue as well. And that is because the birthdays and the Christ Mass are actually interwoven and interdependent upon each other. So we have a case here of people 
who know that the Christmas tree is pagan, who know, in fact, that Jesus was not born in December at this time of year, but in fact, she very emphatically stated, yes, he was born in September. But she marveled at the fact that I didn't even celebrate, that we don't celebrate, the birthday of the Son of God. And, uh, you know, like I said, that led to a, a meaty discussion. And, um, and that led to, well, don't you celebrate your own birthday? And I said, no, no ma'am, I don't. Oh, don't you celebrate your children's birthday? No, we don't. Oh, your poor children. I said, well ma'am, I'm sorry, I don't agree. And here's why. And I began to explain to her, you know, that you're saying that out of a place because you're enslaved in this spiritual, social system which you've been a part of your whole life. And for you to stop celebrating birthdays would be kind of hard because you've been doing it your whole life. But my children, they have not been doing it their whole life. In fact, you know, we don't celebrate birthdays like that. We don't do... The, the birthday wishes and the birthday cakes with the, uh, the the candles on them and the blowing them out of the wishes and the and the and uh, the making wishes with the birthday candles. I know I just repeated myself. Please forgive me. We don't do the gift giving any of that kind of stuff because of where it comes from. You see, and I you know I've got a a very strong uh, conviction and revelation about that topic. And if anyone's curious, I'd be willing to share that. Um, but nevertheless, part of its origin, birthdays, was the celebration. The pagans would celebrate the inception, or the birthdays, of what they considered to be demigods. You know, fallen angels mingling with certain women folk and the offspring producing interesting characters all throughout history. By the way, Alexander the Great. His mother claimed that she was impregnated by one of the Greek gods, I believe Zeus. She claimed that she was impregnated by him, and that Alexander the Great was a product of the, of the union between a fallen angel and herself. History is full of such things. So anyways, that's where birthdays come from, is they would celebrate the birthdays of these gods. Part of those celebrations incurred uh, part of those celebrations involved um, the making of a ceremonial cake, offering it upon the altar to that god or that goddess, uh, and of course with candles on it, an offering of other uh, sacrificial ceremonial gifts. And it was surely to appease the gods and to please them and to worship them, but it was also an act of... Um, superstition in that it was supposed to keep away other evil spirits. And eventually this kind of downgraded into something that common people just did for everybody's birth and their families. And this eventually became a universal celebration. But anyway, to spare you of unnecessary detail at the moment, um, this is how people function in today's world. They do these things. And so as a result of that, they assume that they ought to celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. And you see, that's the kind of things that our society does. And we do all kinds of things like this without even questioning, wondering the origins of them. Where did this come from? Why do we do this? <clears throat> so, the clear and undeniable answer to why we should not celebrate Christmas or the birthday of Jesus at all is because God said in the Old Testament to not worship him the way that the nations, the pagan nations, the heathen nations, worship their gods. He said, do not incorporate the way in which they worship their gods. Do not worship me like they worship their gods. You understand this. Um, so to, to celebrate Jesus' birthday is unscriptural, it's breaking God's command, it's, it's totally out of the realm of God's kingdom. God doesn't operate that way, all right? And now, believe me, I'm just scratching the surface with this, with this topic. But, you know, there's a lot of Christians, so-called, unfortunately, that wrestle with the idea 
okay, so fine, you can prove to me that uh, the Christmas tree is pagan. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ and the whole December 25th thing. It's not scriptural. But hey, we should be celebrating his birthday, right? I mean, come on, right? Well, no, we shouldn't. And that's because God doesn't want us to. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. It's totally the wrong spirit, the wrong attitude, the wrong outlook. It's an assumption. It's a presupposition based on the influences of a pagan culture. Okay? But God doesn't want it. God doesn't want us to function like that. He doesn't want us to worship Him like that. He never told us to. And in fact, He's told us the exact opposite. The way in which the pagans worship their gods. Do not worship me like that. Do not add that stuff to my system of faith, okay? So, I just wanted to share that with you. We need to teach our children the truth. We need to teach our children the truth about all kinds of things, brethren. And do not withhold the truth from your children. We need to raise our children in a way that's right to God, in a way that's in agreement and in harmony with God and His kingdom. All right, and there's just no room for any of this folly or paganism or any of this abominable idolatries in our lives. And we dare not teach them to our children and ruin them and defile them. So, you know, my this woman that I was speaking with, this older lady, she said, your poor children will know my children are not poor. They're very blessed. And, you know, my children get blessed by my wife and I. We don't need a holiday to give them gifts. We don't need a holiday to be thankful for them. You know, we don't need a, 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 a system of slavery to tell us when to do good deeds and to love people and to give gifts and all this kind of stuff, my friends. You know what? You want to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? You want to celebrate uh, His resurrection? You want to celebrate Jesus Christ? Then here's what you do every single day of your life. You take up your cross daily. You deny yourself. You're resurrected with Him every single day. You're ascended in the Spirit with Him every day. This is the sign that you need to give. This is the, the daily reality you need to live in. And thus you will celebrate the birth. You will, thus you will celebrate the inception, the miraculous conception, the virgin conception of Jesus, the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, and His ascension. Now set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, you also shall appear with Him in glory. Brethren, we need our minds renewed so deeply, so thoroughly, because there are so many humanistic and pagan and idolatrous, abominable things that work deep within our psyche. And the Lord wants to redeem us from all of it. He wants to renew us from all of it. And we got to get a mind we got to get the mind of Christ. we got to think like Him and see the world like Him. we got to step back and reevaluate, you know, why we have such ceremonies and traditions and rituals in our lives. we got to examine ourselves. Brethren, we need to cleanse ourselves. God told us to come out from among them, among them and be separate, to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, and thereby perfect holiness in the fear of God. We're told to come out of Babylon and be not partakers of her sins. We're told to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We're told to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And brethren, Jesus said, If you continue in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. just wanted to share those things with you, brethren. Grace and peace unto you.